In this training video, you will receive a high-level overview of the new features and improvements in shop floor tracking. The areas of improvement include setup improvements in the shop floor tracking workbench, allowing you to efficiently enter direct and indirect labor, actual and elapsed time, multitasking entries, automatic breaks, and shift times. Processing on the employee level includes entries such as clocking in and out, actual, indirect labor, as well as break times and stop times, the ability to view outstanding activities, easier entry because keystrokes and mouse clicks are limited with connected functions, and multiple time zones are now supported. Processing for managers includes viewing all activities, making corrections, adding missing entries, and using the posting process to create work order tracking that can be run interactively or scheduled as a recurring batch. Improvements to team management include the ability to handle tasks for multiple employees at the same time. There are two types of teams, summary and detailed. Summary provides the ability to track a number of employees rather than individuals. Detailed teams, activities can be started and stopped for all active employees at once. And additionally, an employee can work on individual tasks and rejoin a team when complete. Lastly, a machine can remain running while employees are on break or other exclusive tasks. Another area of improvement is with automated data collection. It combines the features and functionality of shop floor tracking with the portability and convenience of automated data collection. It was designed primarily for use with VT terminals on the shop floor for clocking in and out and for setting start and stop times. Why are these enhancements important to you? The enhancements with the setup functions facilitate the collection of actual labor. The tracking functions are more friendly for shop floor employees. The local feature was globalized to enhance manufacturing offerings for additional industries and vertical development. And a shop floor tracking workbench was added to allow shop floor employees to efficiently make their entries. What are the benefits of the new shop floor tracking features, there is better support for businesses operating on a cost plus basis. It provides the ability to switch control between actual and elapsed time entry in order to maintain accurate costs and to identify training and productivity opportunities. It moves the activity from the back office to the floor, reducing the gap between the physical activity and the organizational visibility. It has a simplified workflow and provides advanced algorithms for labor, proration, and synchronized activities. We've designed a new workbench to collect production activity with a focus on improving the user experience. These improvements include providing an employee view of all outstanding activities to be performed, limiting keystrokes and mouse clicks with connected functions, display and support of multiple time zones, managers can view all activities as well as make corrections and manually add missing entries due to employee error, and there is also a posting process to create the work order tracking that can be run interactively or scheduled as a recurring batch job. There are three new setup parameters located in Manufacturing Production Tracking Controls Group. The first parameter indicates if auto brakes are used. The second parameter determines if clock in is required. And the third parameter is used if you have work centers in one time zone and the server is in another time zone. There is a new setup function for defining indirect reference codes. 
These codes are used for tracking employee activity that is not related to a work order or operation. These code types determine the behavior and action within the workbench. Shift codes is a new optional function to track shift times. It's a convenient way to group data for reporting. There is a new setup function for employee information used in Shop 4 tracking. It replaces the previous employee IDs function and it establishes default values such as site and work centers among the other values. Now let's take a look at how to perform setup in shop floor tracking. Now let's go ahead and walk through the setup. So we'll start off with our indirect reference codes. Those are set up under common data, manufacturing tables, and indirect references. You'll see I already have a few codes defined. I have my administration time, which is a non-exclusive labor task, my afternoon break, which is an auto break, my manual break, and then meeting, which is an exclusive labor. I also need to define a lunch break. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on create, enter my code, and my description. You'll see here is the category type we mentioned before. If you click the drop down, we have the capability to assign time off, break, non-exclusive labor, exclusive labor, and auto break. Because I'm going to assign this code to a shift and I want it to be taken out automatically from any employee clocked in during that shift, I'm going to go ahead and select auto break. And then I'll go ahead and click save. If I click on list, I now see that my lunch break is available. Now to define my shift, I'm going to go to common data, manufacturing tables, and shifts. I have three shifts already defined, a day shift, a night shift, and a swing shift, but I have an additional shift for day that I need to create. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the create button, enter my shift code in the description. My start time will be 7 a.m. and my end time will be 3 p.m. So it automatically calculated the duration of eight hours. Now if I want to sign both my lunch break and um, my afternoon break, I can go ahead and click on the plus sign and that enables the grid. I'll click the lookup and you'll see here the lookup is filtered based on what um, indirect reference codes we have assigned to auto break. So the first item I'm going to enter is lunch. As we mentioned, they have to be chronological. So lunch will come before the afternoon break. The start time will be 11 a.m. and end time at 11.30. Now I also want to assign an afternoon break. So again, I'll click the lookup, select uh, my afternoon break, and that afternoon break will be at 2 o'clock. So I'm going to go ahead and enter 1400 for 2 o'clock and 1415 for 215. Again, it automatically calculates the duration. And then I'll go ahead and click Save. Now that I've defined both my indirect tasks and my shift codes, I'm ready to go ahead and assign those to the employees. So I'm going to go to Common Data, Manufacturing Tables, and Employees. Now you'll see in the new employees task, we have all the previous records from the old employee IDs function. So we didn't lose any data when we moved the function from employee IDs to the new service class oriented employees. All our information is listed here and we can, if need be, open them up and edit so that we can assign the new fields. For this particular example, I'm going to go ahead and create a new employee instead. So I'll click on create, enter my employee ID, 2000. The employee is John Smith. Short description can be their initial or anything that will help associate that employee. He is active. I can assign an X3 user code if they are an X3 user. For this particular case, I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. Enter their labor rate, their shift code, 
this new employee is going to be on my day shift two. So I'll select day two. You'll see the active date automatically defaulted to today's current date. If they were inactive or if they were going to be uh, coming on on a future date, I can change this date here and that would determine whether they will be available in the shop floor workbench. So if they weren't going to start till the end of the month, I can go ahead and enter 3.30 in here and then we'll show later on um, within the demonstration how that employee will not be available until 3.30. We can also determine a default site. This will be the default site that appears in the workbench whenever the employee selects their employee ID. We can also define a default work center or a work center group. I'm going to go ahead and leave those blank so we can further demo how we can change those defaults right within the workbench. And the last option we have in here is elapsed labor. This will determine whether the elapsed labor action is available within the workbench. We're going to go ahead and select this particular uh, John Smith will be able to enter elapsed labor. And then I'll hit save. And if we come back to our list, we see John is now available. Now you have seen a high level overview of the new features and improvements for shop floor tracking. You have learned that these improvements will make your shop floor tracking easier to use and improve productivity.